AMC 10A 2020 Problem 21, there exists a uniquely strict increasing sequence of non-negative integers a1, a2, all the way to ak, such that that fraction simplifies to that summation. What is k? So right off the bat, we see here that we're trying to factor out a fraction into some summation of many quantities. So let's follow the flow of the question. So 2 to the 289th plus 1 over 2 to the 17th plus 1. We're trying to factor out into some format like this to help us find out the values of a k and k subsequently. So right, simplifying this fraction isn't really easy because we have 17th and 289. That's a very big number. So let's simplify it. We see that 289 is equal to 17 squared. And therefore, I can say 2 to the 17th is equal to x. And the reason why I make this assumption is because I can rewrite 2 to the 289th power as 2 to the 17th, 17th power plus 1 over 2 to the 17th plus 1. Therefore, we substitute x, x to the 17th plus 1 over x plus 1 becomes much more manageable. And from this form, we can now factor it. This will be equal to x to the 16th minus x to the 15th plus x to the 14th minus x to the 13th. Add this all the way down to x squared minus x plus 1. 1 is x to the 0th power. And think about why this works. When we multiply this quantity by x plus 1, we must get x to the 17th plus 1. So let's work backwards. x to the 16th times x plus 1 gets x to the 17th plus x to the 16th. But we have an extra x to the 16th that we don't want. So we multiply it by negative x to the 15th to subtract x to the 16th out, but then we're left with another negative x to the 15th. So we get that out by multiplying by a positive x to the 14th to add it away. But then we have another positive x to the 14th, which you get rid of by a negative x to the 13th times x. And you see where this pattern goes, and you see why this sequence is correct. But is this sequence usable? Well, we cannot use it because we see here that Within this summation, it's all positive. There is never a repeating negative plus, negative plus pattern. So we cannot use this form. We must further factor it such that we can write it into this format. And how do we do it? Well, we see here that only x to the n minus x to the n minus 1 has a negative symbol in its adding with one another. This is the same because x to the 16th minus x to the 15th x to the 14th minus x to the 13th, x squared minus x. You see this pattern that x to the nth will always minus x to the n minus 1. So how do we factor this such that we can get rid of this negative symbol? Well, we can factor out x to the n times 1 minus x to the negative 1, or we can take it as x to the n minus 1 times x minus 1. Now, both forms work, but which one is a much better path to go to and obviously it will be this one not only is it more visually appealing but this one has a nasty fraction never deal with fractions when trying to simplify things it will only make things harder and give you a more likelihood of getting it wrong so let's scroll down and begin to factor this even more so since every single number that has a subtraction with another follow this pattern that x to the n minus x to the n minus one they will all result in a grand factor of x minus 1 because they all follow this pattern of x to the n minus x to the n minus 1. So therefore we can factor out an x minus 1 overall and multiply it by the remainder which is x to the n minus 1 power which is in this case x to the 15th because remember which one is the smaller power of the two? The smaller power is 15. So x to the 15th then we add this with x to the 13th then we add this to x to the 11th, then we add this to x to the 9th, then we add this to x to the 7th, x to the 5th, x to the 3rd, and then x. And then we do not need to include 1, because 1 does not have a subtraction with another term to match it with this sequence. So we just add 1 at the end. And now that we have this out of the way, what can we further deduce about this term? Well, we see here that this, sum this summation is written in the form of all summation. But this is not. So is there any way that we can alter it furthermore? Well, now is a great time to reintroduce the fact that we assume x to be 2 to the 17th. So this is 2 to the 17th minus 1 times 2 to the 17th times 15 plus 2 to the 17th times 13. And you can substitute it all the way to 2 to the 17th plus 1. And now that you have this, 
this still isn't helping us, but is it really not helping us? What does this look like? What does this term look like? Well, this looks like popping out to me as a geometric sum. And now, if you do not know what the summation for a geometric sequence is for n terms, it will be the first term, a of 1, times 1 minus the quotient to the nth power over 1 minus q. Now, you can factor out a negative symbol from both the numerator and the denominator to get a of 1 times q to the n power minus 1 over q minus 1. Both give the same result. We factored a negative 1 from this term and negative 1 from this term to result in this summation formula. They both are equal to one another. So 2 to the 17th minus 1. So 2 to the 17th minus 1 looks awfully similar and like as a geometric summation. So the first term for this obviously has to be 1 times the geometric difference, which is 2, to the number of 17th minus 1 over the geometric difference of 2 minus 1. So we have seen that, yes, 2 to the 17th minus 1 does indeed form a geometric series. And therefore, what can we say about this? Well, we can say that we can expand 2 to the 17th minus 1 as the summation of a geometric series. And now you might be wondering how I deduce that this is a geometric series. Well, this comes out of familiarity with how geometric, geometric sums look like. Geometric sums typically look like a number raised to some power minus 1. When you see this form, what immediately jumps out at you is that this might be the summation of a geometric series. So that is why I know that 2 to the 17th minus 1 is a geometric series. So this will be 2 to the 16th plus 2 to the 15th plus 2 to the 14th plus, or yeah, 2 to the 14th plus 2 to the 13th plus all the way down to 2 to the first power. And then we have 2 uh, plus 1 because that is the first term. And then we multiply it by this mess, which is 2 to the 17th times 15 plus 2 to the 17th times 13. And then we add it all the way to 2 to the 17th. And then we add 1. So finally, if we multiply this term with this term, we get the desired sequence, which is 2 to the a's of 1 plus 2 to the a's of 2 and plus all the way on and on. The base is 2, the exponents make sense, and the alternating symbols is in eliminated. So finally, we have factored into a form that's usable. But now we're trying to find the number of terms that there are. Well, how many terms can this result in? Well, for example, if I have a plus b, times c plus d. How many terms will there be? Well, a can be multiplied with c and a can be multiplied with d to result in two terms. b can be multiplied with c, b can be multiplied with d. So that's another two terms. We multiply the two to get four terms. And we see if this is correct. This is equal to ac plus ad plus bc plus bd. There are indeed four terms. So we can say that we can apply this pattern into this pattern. So 2 to the 16th all the way to 1, how many are there? Well, there are obviously 17 terms. 1 to 16 inclusive is uh, 17, or, or yeah, 17 after all. And from this, how many terms are there within this parentheses? Well, we see here that they're all alternating by 2. There are 15, 13, 11, 9, 7. So this goes down by a arithmetic sequence of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And we can just count it manually and ignore any further complication. So 13, then 15. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But then remember, uh, I actually am missing a term right here. It's supposed to be add a 2. And why are you adding a 2? Because I, when I factored this, uh, I think I actually factored it wrong. Because when you this goes all the way down to x and x to the 2 to the 17th. So 15 minus 1. So it's 1, 3. Oh, actually, uh, there, you're not supposed to add it to. I do not know how I got this from. I actually skipped a term here. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. So yes, there is 8 terms. I, was, I actually did this question beforehand and I got kind of surprised. But yes, now that we have the right number of terms. We have 17 terms in the first parentheses. We have eight terms in the second parentheses. So we multiply the number of terms to get the desired number, which is 136. But notice that we must add one. So meaning that ev after every single thing is factored out, we still have one more term plus one. So we must add one to get 137 terms in all. We scroll up and we see that number C 
is our solution. So we can circle that and be sure that our answer is correct.